What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Want to do a quick post fight recap and review my thoughts on Robise Ramirez versus Shakur Stevenson. Now, if you watched the Rio Olympics 2016, Shakur Stevenson was defeated by Robise Ramirez, and Ramirez went on to two peat and got a second gold medal for Cuba. So, shout out to Ramirez, and Shakur Stevenson plays silver. He brings the silver to the USA. So I want to talk about it. I think the right person won for starters. I think Ramirez did win the fight two to one. Definitely a fair score. It was competitive. I think Shakur Stevenson knew he had to try to turn it around some kind of way. And on that third round, he really tried to put the pedal to the metal and and get some stuff done. Shakur Stevenson also admitted that he believes Ramirez beat him. So I like that that sportsmanship even though he's sad he's passionate he's emotional he's not going to do like you see this a ton of pro fighters where they clearly lost a fight i mean i just seen a robbery in 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 new york with uh cream mayfield versus ayubov on showtime and i thought cream mayfield clearly won the fight and ayubov even looked shocked when they said he was the winner and remained undefeated he had a delayed reaction and then he starts dancing, like, yeah, yeah, bah, ha, ha, dancing and doing stuff. And I always see that type of behavior in the pros. Like, as a man or a woman, whatever you're, you're competing as, it's just, to me, my, me personally, I can't take pride in knowing that I didn't really win, like, and they just awarded me a decision. We see a lot of robberies and stuff in, in pro boxing, and some people don't care. They're just, oh, I got the win, ha <laughs> ha, and that's it. So I, I commend Shakur Stevenson, is what I'm saying, for being open and honest and candid in an emotional state. You know what I mean? No one wants to go that far, and you train so hard to lose. In his post-fight interview, Shakur Stevenson, visibly emotional and they said, how do you feel that you play silver? Do you still feel accomplished? That's a hell of an accomplishment. And he was like, no, I don't like to lose. And he, he was, started crying and kind of put his head down and stuff. So I felt gutted for him because I know how much that must mean to him to come that far. You're getting praise. Big bro, Floyd Mayweather shows up and there's talks of you being signed. And Shakur Stevenson, his admitted favorite fighter is Andre Ward. That's who he cites as his his idol or the guy he looks up to in boxing first and foremost that's the guy right and as you know Andre Ward was the last U.S. men's boxing champion to achieve a gold medal in the Olympics so I think that also was maybe some added pressure because if Bruce Lee's my idol and then we have a chance to compete in like let's say the same tournament then of course I'm going to want to place and, and do well and win the tournament like he did. You know what I mean? That's what, I mean, it just goes without saying. That's who you looked up to. So I think for, in his mind, and I'm going to kind of break that down a little bit too, maybe he feels like I let my idol down. You know what I mean? Like J. Cole has a song, I let Nas down. And Nas is a rapper he looked up to. It kind of reminds me of that. Maybe Shakur Stevenson is feeling that. But Andre Ward actually tweeted, and it was a great message and i'll try to put some of the different uh, tweets in this video from andre Berto, andre Durrell, etc and just my thoughts on the whole situation you didn't let anybody down i don't think you let anybody down just to achieve that is phenomenal to even get to the olympics and you represented the usa well you didn't go out there and just get smoked you tried you had heart and you have to bounce back like a true champion that's really how i see it you can let this moment define you or you could rise to the occasion, learn from it and go on to do greater things. There's a ton of people I can name off the top of my head that got silver or lower, right? You, Deontay Wilder, he's a person who is a current champion and you know what I mean? He looks like he might be a difficult person to beat based on that power, his athleticism, his willpower. And I seen a video of him getting stopped it looked like by a nobody like I, I don't even know who this guy was and he was getting stopped in the Olympics he got a bronze medal he was a late addition to boxing got a bronze medal right and he's going on to do good things Errol Spence Jr. he didn't get a medal and he went on to he's fighting this weekend and he's almost in, in line for a title shot for Kell Brooks IBF belt if he keeps it after the Golovkin fight I don't know how that's going to play out 
right? There's tons of people. Vander Holyfield, Floyd Mayweather got robbed. Roy Jones Jr. got robbed and went on to be an unstoppable force from like 1988 to the early 2000s, right? Gennady Golovkin, and all guys, got a silver medal. He's fighting Kell Brook. He should be the favorite in that particular fight in another person's backyard. He's undefeated. He's he's looking like a wrecking ball. Silver medal. You also have guys like Amir Khan, and the list goes on and on and on. So to me, my final message to Shakur Stevens, don't let it define you. Don't dwell on it. And hold your head up high. You represented the country the best way of your ability, and you came up short. So you can grow from that when you turn pro. Use that. Use that. It's all about using energy, right? Like, it's like, think of gasoline or something. If a human drinks gasoline, what's going to happen? They'll die. But if you put gasoline in a vehicle, then it's going to be your best friend. It's going to get you to work. It's going to get you through your commute if you go on a road trip, right? So it's all about how you take that, like, fuel can be deadly as i just showed you if you drink it swallow it and just so i don't get sued nobody drink gasoline but that's what i'm saying if you drink gasoline then it's, it's useless for you and you'll die but if you put it in your vehicle then it becomes a lifesaver so that's really what i think shakur stevenson needs to do with this moment um don't capture it and dwell on it and stuff use it use it to to further your pro career use it as motivation floyd mayweather looked pissed when he got robbed he's like oh i guess i gotta turn pro now i remember the watching the video he's like i'm gonna turn pro he basically was he felt like cheated and you know what i mean he felt like it was crooked and he could have used that and dwelled on it and been that person 15 years later like oh i went to the olympics and i'm so mad but you don't want to go in to to the future with a chip on your shoulder. Tim Bradley did that versus Ruslan Provotnikov. Got all this backlash for beating Pacquiao, and he went into the Ruslan Provotnikov fight with a chip on his shoulder, fought a dumb fight, almost paid for it, almost got knocked out in that fight. So that's my advice. Uh, as far as uh, Rabisi Ramirez, I mean, I can't wait to see when he turns pro. Two-time gold medalist, and he's a beast. I mean, I knew this was gonna be a difficult fight for Shakur or anybody, just based on the style. I think the American style and the Cuban style is probably the hardest worldwide universally to defeat. And there's a lot of good Cubans. And it's weird because the Cuban boxing school is a problem. Like they're just very slick. I'm not trying to categorize every Cuban because I know there's there's different people, but what they teach you in that school by and large is it's crazy. Like you you get very familiar with your style that's that's one thing i know about notice about a lot of the cubans um they're very comfortable in their style whatever the style is and there's differences you got guys like edison Lada, very economical he'll pot shot you to death uses his left hand like crazy and varies it but then you also have yuri Urkis gamboa who kind of has more of a bravado cocky style and uh, athleticism and speed uses both hands more than than a guy like Lada. then you got a guy like Luis King Kong Ortiz, who's kind of a combination of everybody. And see, this is the thing with the Cuban style is I, I even seen this with Ramirez when I was like studying him up. He does different things. I seen one fight where for large chunks, he just had his hands down like Roy Jones Jr. And he was very comfortable in that. And he's kind of sticking his head out like Sugar Ray Leonard did versus Roberto Duran, things like that. That takes confidence that prince nasim type of bravado where you're just like baiting somebody in that takes a lot of confidence because most people like especially like let's say a non-boxer a person who's just like never really been in a fight you're not going to do that you're not going to be confident enough to do all of that you'll be flinching if even if you did do it and somebody was acting like they're coming towards you you're going to be flinching and and um like kind of timid to do stuff like that so it just it's a testament to the cuban boxing school those guys are really prepared for this moment i've seen different looks and like i said i knew it would be a difficult fight i thought shakur stevenson might be able to pull it off and it came up short silver medal uh shout out to robisi ramirez i can't wait to see what he turns pro he has a uh, two medals under his belt i mean that's a hell of an accomplishment so we'll, we'll stay tuned to both fighters careers you guys drop it in the comment section let me know what you thought personally that's my breakdown make sure you like my video as always hate comment and subscribe to the next video is ego signing off